Yeah, so I'm uh, Hans Christian Bauer, normally just called HC. Um, and uh, I work as a designer here in uh, Copenhagen. I'm originally from Norway, but I've been living here for 18 years. Uh, I do uh, a lot of different uh, products, uh, most uh, like furniture. I designed this chair here and also all of the pieces on the table, uh, which is a large series I have for a Danish company called Kater Design. Uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about the background of uh, two projects and how I I use the Muse uh, uh, like um, yeah in, 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 and how I, I um, uh, how I see the Muse can be used or in in my way. Usually, uh, when you talk about a Muse, you imagine something like uh, oh, can we get the whole picture in some way so that my text is not. Oh. Uh, uh. Move if I could make uh, can make by doing the smell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, so yeah. So usually you would say uh, a muse as uh, the traditional way of saying it. That was what I thought of when when I got the asked, you know, can we talk something about a muse? Then I re uh, immediately thought of uh, Frida Kahlo with uh, her uh, husband, uh, Diego, um, sorry, <laughs> I forgot, Rivera. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, usually it's, it's the, when you see it, it's this, um, it's this uh, typically the, the man the artist uh, and the being inspired by a, a younger woman uh, who inspires his art in fantastic ways. But I've, I'm trying to, but I tried to think about, you know, how this muse uh, could be uh, interpreted in uh, in other ways, uh, and uh, I thought a lot about that it could be, it could more be um, a point of, of like what direction to to go creatively, uh, in the sense of that when I start a new project, I often try to find out all of the different parameters for that project and. And especially the ones who are easy to write down or have like a, an exact amount of in, in some way that could be like uh, what does the project do? like who are the clients and what the materials do they work in uh, uh, how much does it cost what uh, kind of shops do they sell this in uh, how uh, what kind of um, what kind of competitors do we have and a lot of these things are really easy to put into some lists and to get an overview uh, which I really like to do. But then all of us, uh, very often, of course, I mean, apart from all of the, like the, these uh, <coughs> easily uh, um, measurable uh, uh, elements, there are always the artistic elements where you are like, but I mean, you can't really say, well, should this curve look like this or should it look like this from a parameter like that? You, you often need to, that's where the, the creative and the artistic um, uh, point of view comes uh, comes into work, and here I, I really find it uh, uh, find it a, a good like a good idea to uh, to pick out some creative idea that could be a mood board or a inspiration or even like a painting or something that you would like to to find the the, the soul of this uh, of this uh, the muse uh, object. Um, and how you can use that in, in your work to, to guide your work in the right creative direction. Um, I'm going to, the first uh, example I'm, I'm going to talk about is this uh, Hammersoy collection, uh, which I made for, uh, for uh, Kaler, which is a, a large uh, collection of uh, mainly ceramic products, but also stuff like uh, cutlery and glasses and uh, and thermojug and stuff, um, and uh, and it consists of over 80 different products in the same range, <coughs> and uh, and it was actually the first product I I designed as as uh, being an independent designer, and before that I have been, uh, I have been uh, I've been working at some different um, uh, creative studios, but also within the same uh, type of uh, design, uh, and uh, so and I really wanted to have this like my goal for the series from the start was to make a, a large series uh, because I, I had found out uh, during my uh, my previous work that I was uh, good at making like uh, large series of products within the same theme um, and I also uh, wanted to to be able to have some sort of uh, DNA that was able to 
to be able to uh, to make all of these uh, uh, yeah to be scalable. And uh, I made a design analysis on uh, Kaler uh, uh, and uh, looked at what they were good at and what they were not so good at. If I compared them to the other places I've worked and what I felt. And uh, one of the things was that they were really proud of their long history and uses it, used it really active in their marketing. Uh, so they all, of it, all the time they would show all of these old uh, pictures uh, of, their, of the uh, old artists because um, Kaler traditionally is a really old company. It's uh, 180 years old, but has changed hands during the years. So you could say that between, or in 1975, it basically closed down and it was it then re-emerging in, again in 2007. But, but they are still, they have been working a lot with keeping this, you know, keeping it as a cer mainly ceramic company. And uh, so that's been their goal to, to keep this tradition. Uh, and then also they had a strong t tradition of reinterpreting the, their classic designs. Like this is one of their big, dis big uh, success, this Macho vase, which probably a lot of you know which was uh, actually like a reinterpretation of an old uh, vase from the 40s, uh, which, you know, the, the old uh, caterer had taken the old vase, showed it to some new designers, said, can you make a modern interpretation of this? And then they, they got this more modern uh, version out of it. And I thought that was, of course, also very interesting in, uh, in this, uh, instead of a lot of the other Danish design companies who just, who just take the old vase and reissue it. Uh, and also I noticed that one of the things that they were really good at was actually making the ceramic pr or porcelain products look like they were made of ceramic and not, for example, if you look at this cup here, it's, it's because it has a very dull glaze. It could just as well, from the point you're sitting, it could just as well be made of plastic. But, it's, uh, but by working with this uh, semi-transparent glaze and also some quite sharp edges and uh, so, uh, some places where the a glaze can uh, can gather. You can see on the brown that on the sharp edges the uh, the, the material comes through the glaze to become white, and the, in the in the corners it uh, it becomes uh, darker because there's more glaze. And I thought if we could work with these edges and edge uh, to you uh, to get the glaze working, it would be uh, very good. And also back at back then, uh, Kaler had mostly creative, no, mostly decorative uh, items only, which uh, which also I felt that there was a, a big uh, uh, possibility of moving into dining products. Uh, and also a, a couple of years earlier, I've been uh, working in a shop who sold a lot of these um, type of products. Uh, and what I've noticed talking to the customers, what's that uh, a lot of the um, the table uh, top series we had, they were, uh, there were a lot of the times people, if they didn't like, if they didn't buy the plates, uh, all of the other uh, items were quite uh, uh, uninteresting or neglected. And, uh, and that's why I thought that there should be a potential of buying or, or making a, a series uh, where also all of the, the separate parts were interesting on their own and uh, not just if you were collecting the, the whole series. So, okay, so this, the key features that I found were this characteristic uh, glaze, the focus on the dining over decoration, making the additional parts an asset of the, of the series, and also making this B2B friendly uh, elements, which uh, in another, is another way of saying uh, corporate Christmas gifts, because that's a huge market within this, uh, within this type of, uh, of uh, design. And, uh, and it was a market that uh, I could see that some other places I've worked were really good at and uh, which Kaler was really bad at. So, uh, so that's, that also was a, I tried to put that into so they could have more, uh, more uh, products to, to sell to that type of um, business. And uh, uh, you could say that these four factors are the calculable factors. Um, but then also I had this reinterpretation with a historic link but who should it be? So I started looking into uh, looking into Kaler's history, and quite uh, quite uh, quickly I f uh, fell on um, on Sven Hammarsson, which is their most uh, prolific uh, designer, and he worked for them uh, from he was uh, for over fifty years. Actually, from he was. Uh, uh, from he was uh, around 17, 17, 18 years old, uh, and until he was, yeah, around seventy. 
uh, and uh, and he was uh, he had um, first of all I, I found that a lot of the like a lot of this you know I talked about the corners and the glaze and he worked a lot with these uh, types of uh, of uh, details already but also I was really inspired by his type of working that he was he just continued working with uh, Kaler and tr uh, continued the developing uh, different types of styles and different types of uh, of uh, products um, and uh, also also you know sometimes he would be away from the from the factory a couple of years and then he would come back and then be there like all the time for for 10 years and it was a really inspiring uh, person he is also the younger brother of the famous painter Wilhelm Hamasai um, which is um, and he so he also tr uh, which is also was also his link through uh, t to uh, coming into contact with Kaylee because he was a lot younger than his brother and so his brother was already quite a famous uh, artist and he could put him in uh, in contact with uh, other artists like Binnesbull who, who was already at Kaylee at the time so I decided to focus on uh, on Hamasai and try to find some elements of his that I could uh, use in to get the historic link so this was actually the first uh, picture in the first presentation I sent to Kaler, where I really didn't try to uh, hide where I got the inspiration from. Uh, and actually I heard later from them that it worked really well, that they just saw this picture and they knew immediately how they could market it. Um, and of course, a lot, like a lot of them, after, since, or after, I think I sent this to them in October 13. And then the first products were launched in January 15. Uh, so it was like a year and a half uh, where we continued working on the products and actually I, I thought I, I think I started sending them eight products in the range and I thought oh they probably start with uh, th uh, five, four and then can expand it up to eight later but they just said straight away that oh this looks really good we have to work more with it but we need more pieces in the first uh, first run so we started with 13 pieces and then in different colors, it was like 27. Um, so uh, the first uh, series, uh, or the first, uh, yeah, the first launch was uh, these uh, 20 or 13 different products, uh, which were plates and cups, and also uh, these uh, salt and pepper grinders up here. Uh, and I'm going to run quickly through some of the like elements where I could use uh, Hamasai's inspiration. Uh, and here, for example, also with the, this is a large uh, fruit dish that he made uh, once where I could like use some of the, some of the elements here with the, with how he put these furrows uh, on the plate, uh, on the, uh, on the dish. I tried to use some of that on the, <laughs> on the plate as well, but where he has, for example, just cut off the, the furrows down here, I tried to reintroduce, I really like this uh, up here on the, on the vase, there's this, um, element of the furrows uh, disappearing down here. And I really worked a lot to get them to like disappear in under the glaze uh, to get this really nice um, concept. Uh, and also I tried to, for example, also with these uh, salt and pepper grinders, which was actually also one of the first things I, I, I designed in the series. Uh, also actually got, uh, got very inspired by this picture because I really needed to to get the, when you make a salt and pepper grind, you can just like the, the grinder element itself, you, you buy that from a, from a, from a sub supplier, but, but they need to be put into wood or plastic. Uh, so, and then I looked at this picture and I was like, oh, there's a piece of uh, uh, ceramic on top of uh, some wood. Maybe I can use that. And then, so we got the, actually got quite a direct uh, interpretation to the grinder. Uh, and then after, um, after we uh, launched the first uh, series of the tableware, it was a really big success. And then we needed, so we thought, oh, uh, or Kaylor and I thought, oh, now we made a, you know, a, a lot of uh, dinnerware um, inspired by a vase. So let's make a vase inspired by the vase as well. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, and then we uh, made sort of like a simplified version of uh, Hammersoy's vase uh, and removed the, the heavy top. Um, oh, and remove the heavy top up there with the flowers on it 
uh, and give it a more modern shape. You can see that his uh, the widest point on the on the vase is quite l uh, far down, which I thought was looked a bit uh, old. And also the edge down here is very straight into the table, so I tried to lift it a lot, and then uh, and then also give it a more round edge down here. Uh, and also, but but I noticed also that on the vase it has this arc between the furrows, uh, and I really wanted, and I hadn't. That was a detail that I, I didn't choose to use on the tableware, but I really wanted to use it on the vase. Uh, and here is also some of the like one-to-one -one reinterpretations. So you can see here, for example, that I I've I kept the the these arcs, but a lot simpler way. He also has this double uh, furrowing on his uh, vases and also down here the the bottom is quite different but the fading out is still the same and also up here i tried to instead of just cutting off the top and leaving it with this kind of uh, blunt uh, edge i tried to like a hint towards the the old top uh, with uh, with this line up here okay and uh, yeah and uh, these uh, the vases uh, eventually grew into many different sizes and all of them are like different shapes. They're not just scaled up and down. They are like all of them are, are modeled around the same theme, but in different shapes. And also some candle holders and uh, yeah. And uh, another, just another point, actually after I think two or three years after this, I, we were still working on the new products and I had already made this, uh, <coughs> uh, this, um, uh, milk uh, milk jug, <coughs> which is a uh, quite small milk jug for for coffee. Uh, uh, but and we and I also made the, these uh, cups with the handles on them. And uh, I had and uh, Kayla asked if I could make a, a larger jug uh, for for water or a pitcher. Uh, and of course, like the, the, uh, both uh, both me and Kayla also felt like it was a good idea to start with uh, using the. The, the milk uh, mug as a, or the milk jug as a, uh, as a starting point because it had already <coughs> been very uh, popular. Uh, so of course, but, but now I needed a handle for the, for the pitcher. And uh, so my initial idea was just to take the handle from the mug and uh, put it on the, on the pitcher. But that didn't really look that good if I just took the mug, scaled it up and put the handle on it and stretched it. But so so I, I couldn't do that. And then I was like, oh, how do I, how do I make a, a new handle that fits into the series? Uh, and then I returned to uh, to Hamasai again and looked oh, and looked at uh, some of his uh, stuff. And then actually I noticed uh, this uh, here, which had a real nice handle. Uh, and it was of course something else than the other parts I've been working with. But it, that I felt that like that could be worked upon. So, and that ended up in, in this one, uh, which, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, so that ended up with, with uh, being this handle, which worked really well, uh, and also got uh, remade as a thermo jug later in plastic, uh, a couple of years later. Uh, can we get this into? Okay, so this is the <clears throat> this is the next example. When I, uh, for, uh, which is another uh, project I've, I did last year, and when the Muse is an app. Uh, and I, last year I got contacted by a Swedish company called Koei Design, uh, which makes a lot of uh, a lot of these decorative items. They're really famous for their these round vases, uh, and also the other most of the other project products you see on the pictures are by them. But they and I was their first external designers. So they were a bit new on how to give a pitch and how to, or how to give like a, an assignment. Uh, but they were like, "Oh, we want something that fits with our other stuff, and uh, you figure out what it is, kind of." But also, I so I asked a lot, and I found out that they were really good at working with uh, with steel. Uh, apart from they, they were already, these are made in, in in ceramic also, but they kind of wanted to have another look. So I decided to work a lot with with steel, and also they were open to stone and or wood. Um, and uh, also they needed to yeah, the, of course, decorative items, which is their market. Uh, but but I found out when I was uh, researching for it that, that 
like 90% of their sales was through Instagram and through these uh, these uh, pictures. So so even though I you know I could, could say I have the calculable uh, factors, which was the materials and kind of like the price, and also looked at some of their competitors to see what they were doing. But actually, I decided quite early that my muse in this project really had to be. Uh, Instagram in, in the sense that uh, <laughs> it had to be and, and, and that that's understood by the way of say, of saying that it uh, products had to be of course they had to be nice when you looked at them up close but they also really had to be really really uh, um, easily recognizable when they were like in a bookshelf on a distance kind of like the like the small uh, you know but that, that because that's I think that's also what what these round vases are because I mean they're Round vases, but 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 the thing is that they're really really recognizable uh, because of this. They have this uh, as, actually instead of having glaze, they are painted with some um, some kind of like uh, plastic uh, paint, uh, which is why they look so matte. Um, and so I started uh, looking at these uh, different shapes, which were also really uh, graphic and uh, easy to recognize, and also easy to put together in the. Uh, and ended up with, uh, I, I think they have, up until now, I think they have launched like f four different products and they have four more uh, that they will launch later. Uh, and, and among that, it was, for example, this, um, this uh, book ring, uh, book stand, which is just called book ring, uh, uh, which is also really simple with these different elements so that when you, of course, when you look at it uh, close, closely, it's, uh, it looks uh, good, but also it's really uh, easy to recognize on a, on a distance because it's it's just a, a really big ring on uh, on the side of a books, and also this uh, the candle holder here, uh, which is also really recognizable with the with the gr clear graphic uh, uh, look, and also really uh, encourages the the user to put it sideways so that you don't put it the other way around. So uh, to wrap it up, uh, the, my, my, my view on the Muse idea is, uh, is that you try to, in a given project, you try to identify the calculable factors uh, and then like, try to find all of the Excel friendly stats <coughs> and make them like one group and then identify the <coughs> creative Muse and use that as a yeah, lighthouse to guide you in the desired creative direction in all factors that are non-calculable and where it can be hard to make a design as it is based on feelings and not on facts. Cool. Thank you.